That's a little preview of my transition pack that I've created for Premiere Pro. If you're interested in using it, let me show you how it works. This pack is compatible with all versions of Premiere Pro that are above 15.0. So if you have Premiere Pro 2021 or above, this pack will work. Once you download the pack, inside Premiere Pro, go to your Effects tab. In the menu, select Import Presets. Find the unzipped preset file, however you pronounce that, and click Open. The pack split up into 12 different styles, and within each subfolder, you'll find a variation of each transition. I tried to make the process of applying the transitions as easy as possible for you, the user. Here, I want to insert a stretch slide transition to the left. Each transition comes in two parts, an A and a B. Drag the A portion onto the first clip and the B portion onto the second clip. And that's it. Most of the transitions in this pack work as simple as that. Drag the A portion onto the first clip and the B portion onto the second clip. If you want to apply the effects directly to a title or graphics, you could and only affect that layer. Like if I want to add a glitch between my titles here, I can do that without affecting the background. One thing I've found to help me preview graphic heavy transitions like the glitches is to create an in point by hitting I and an out point by hitting O around the transition and go up to sequence and select render in to out. There's two transitions that take a couple more steps when applying and that's the zooms and spins. And that's because when I first built this, I had it as simple as adding an A portion and a B portion like every other transition in this pack. And it may look right at first glance, but the perfectionist in me spotted something wrong with this technique. In order to get a zoom or spin, there's this mirroring, replicating, and kind of tiling effect to fill the black spots of the frame, which leads to a lower resolution file while the transition is happening. And then it abruptly switches to the high resolution file when the transition is finished, as you can see me toggling between the two here. So I've created above and bottom parts to the zoom and spin transitions in order to maintain the full resolution throughout the transition without any weird quality drops at the beginning or ending. And here's how you would apply the zoom or the spin. Make cuts near the transition point on both sides. About one second from the edit point will do. It doesn't really matter how long this is because the transition is anchored to this little point right here then click and hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and drag it to the layer above to duplicate those selections. Apply the A above to the above A section clip. Apply the A bottom to the A section bottom clip. Now move on to the B portion. B above goes to the top B portion clip and B bottom goes to the one below it. And there you go. By doing it this way, we no longer have to worry about that switch from low resolution to high resolution. Notice that the transition maintains high quality throughout, as opposed to what we were working with before. If I unable this top clip, <laughs> that doesn't look as good. And just so you get a better idea of what I'm doing with these zooms and spins with the two layers, this bottom layer is used to fill all of that black space with the mirroring and replicating, while the top layer is the full resolution file, just kind of doing the spin in the middle, and that's the same for all of the zooms and the spins. The top layer is gonna be your full resolution file. If I undo this bottom layer, you'll see that here is the full resolution file, and then underneath it is just all of the filler to help fill that black space as the transition happens. I just wanted to take the time to explain that so people get the best quality out of these transitions. And that's also the reason why, if you look here, my zoom in only has three portions, as well as my zoom out only has three portions. I'll put zoom in A on the clip right here, and that's the only thing that needs to happen in the A portion. Because you're zooming in, there's no black space on the outsides. But the moment that I go to my zoom in B portion, you have this black on the outside. So in order to alleviate that, we have a zoom in B bottom. And we now have the full transition. I did build all of these transitions on 16 by nine sequences, but they do work on all aspect ratios. It is important to note that your footage dimensions should match the sequence settings. So anytime you have a mismatch, you need to nest the clips separately, then apply the preset to the nested clips. Same thing holds true with speed ramping as well. So this clip is at 20%. I'm actually gonna reverse it too. So anything that's speed ramped or a different dimension, you wanna make sure you nest before you add the effect. If I wanted to do a spin transition, I might create my cut right here and create my cut right here. I'll nest this one, nest that one. And let's say we wanna do a spin clockwise. So I'm gonna hold option 
and duplicate my tracks like I did before. Do A above, A bottom, B above, B bottom. To add something to these two clips right here, what I might do is something like the film strip. So I'll maybe nest this clip as well and then nest this clip and add a film strip down A to this portion and film strip down B to that portion. And our final product is this. This transition pack, along with all of my other presets and bundles, are available at JavierMercedes.com. If you do decide to purchase this, or if you've purchased anything in the past from me, thank you so much for supporting me in what I create. Until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.